Uh, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is day uh, 14 of the 30 day challenge. Um, a little bit late today, but that's okay. Uh, let's kind of, let's jump right into it then. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. How did you do today? Uh, let me know how, you know, if you have, use any cool techniques. Did you learn anything? Is it fun? Let me know. Everything. Okay, perform string shifts. You're given string S containing lowercase English letters in a matrix shift. Where shifts of I is you go to direction M L. Direction can be zero or one for left shift or right shift. Amount is the amount by which S is to shift. Left shift by one means we move the first character put in the end. Similarly, right shift by one means we move the last character of S and add it to the beginning. We turn the final string after all the operations. Okay. So I think what they are trying to uh, bait you into doing a little bit is kind of just keep on doing, like simulate it one by one. And looking at the constraints, it's possible that it is okay, maybe. It's, it's a little bit close because uh, you want to shift 100 and then you want to shift another. You want to shift a string of 100, 100 times, and then each of that times uh, 100 characters. Um, so actually, you probably could get away with it, to be honest, even beta or not, because 100 cube is only, um, it's only uh, a million, right? Yeah, it's only a million. So that's going to be fast enough, probably. But there are some very uh, simple optimization and some that I'm going to do. Uh, and th this is where... You know, I, analyzing an algorithm, just not. But sometimes you get into a trap where, oh yeah, just end, and then, you know. Uh, but you can actually, you know, analyze an algorithm um, or your, your, the complexity of your code by multiple variables. And in this case, um, you know, n could be the length of the string, or n could be, or maybe I would call it q for number of queries. And, and yeah. But I think one thing to kind of think about is that all these things are linear operations. Uh, and with linear operations, you could just sum them uh, and do them all at the same time at the end. And that's what I'm going to try to do here. Um, so, hmm. so let's see. Um, let's say for query in shift. Um, actually, we can even do a slightly better direction amount. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe we just start with one variable, which is the offset. We start at zero, and then if direction is equal to zero, we shift it to the left. Uh, I guess we just have to make sure at the end it's fine. Uh, so offset. This could also be minus, but as long as you're consistent with the direction, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Um, and then now we can do. Uh, some fancy things like offset. Let's let's set it so you go to offset, uh, offset, offset mod n, where n is the length of the string. Let's declare that because we didn't. Um, and then we want to add it to n. Uh, actually, no. Okay. So what I was about to do is something that you need to do in a lot of languages. Uh, so I was going to write something like this. Um, but in Python, you actually don't for for, in this case, it's probably what it is what I want, but it is, in, it is not consistent with other languages, so you might have to think about it a little bit, um, in the sense that, so in Python, when you mod a number, it's always going to be between 0 and, and minus 1, where in other languages, it could be negative. So, so if, um, if offset was negative, uh, that number mod n would give you a negative number that is smaller than and absolute value. So you would have to add it back to n and then mod it back to n just in case. But in but because we, we are using Python, we actually do not need that. So then now we can just um, we can just do the shift. Uh, let's get this a little bit more. But let's see. So now we get the last letters and then get it wrong. But the only thing that may be a little tricky is I may get, get the signs wrong, but we can test that very easily and very quickly uh, with test cases. So, well, that seems a little bit wrong. Uh, so this is clearly wrong, but... Hmm. Uh, 
Now let's print offset for a second. Okay, so this is actually right. Oh, well, this is before. I was going to say, except for that. But... Oh, did I have the wrong? Oh, yeah, I, I, I do this a lot, actually. This keeps happening where I, I put the wrong thing in the wrong places. Uh, but I think that's okay then. Yep. Uh, and then now let's take out the print statement because I definitely have failed before because of a print statement. Open it up. Submit. There we go. Oh uh, yeah, so this is actually something that I keep on doing because I keep on, I don't know, but what we want is um, the string s starting from the offset character and then we we string concatenate it with the first n or first offset number of characters, uh, but I always swap them, but that's fine, that's an easy fix, right? So yeah, so, so that's a pretty straightforward problem. Um, I'm just thinking now, uh, so in terms of code review, uh, I mean, you yeah, know, this is pretty straightforward. Just, I, I don't know how much I can improve on like eight lines of code. Uh, yeah, maybe direction could be genome, but that's, and then, you know, you could do a, in theory, like a switch case or a dispatch table if you really want to over-engineer it. But again, this is only two things. Um, I think one thing that would be kind of cool is if, um, is if direction is, like maybe if I had to, if I designed an API, I could maybe set directions equal to, I mean, obviously this is not the input, but I would set to negative one and one. And then in, in this case, we could write this chunk of code as like uh, direction times amount. And that would be like really clean, right? Um, if we had the correct API and it kind of would have made sense. But uh, instead we got this genome E thing that's not really a genome, but, uh, but that's also fine, I guess. Uh, yeah, so in terms of code review, I think we're pretty okay, especially for an interview. You know, these are things that, you know, what I just said, maybe you'll talk about your interviewer, but but that's okay. Um, in terms of algorithms, so this is, you know, this is going to be O of, so there are a couple, uh, a couple of uh, ways to kind of analyze the algorithm. Uh, one is the length of the string, so we have to read the length of the string one, so this is going to be O of N to kind of point it out and, you know, stuff like that. You could maybe... If you want to argue, um, now if you want to argue, uh, this is maybe a point of arithmetic, maybe, maybe that's fine, but you still have to return the reconstruct the string. So I consider that O of n, where n is the length of the string, but, um, and also O of q, uh, or O of n plus q, if you will, because we all looked at each, each query once, uh, but that's it. Um, we do not, yeah, the, the number that is in shift doesn't even matter, and in fact, um, it, it's invariant to our problem, uh, and in fact, as I was going to say, the amount could be like a billion, and this would still run in n plus q time, so it's pretty much as good as it gets, I believe, um, at least for this particular case. Um, in terms, for an interview, me trying to think whether, um, as an interviewer, this is a good problem, right? I think this is a very uh, basic, um, fist fuzzy problem in that like maybe it's, it's like the first warm-up problem on a phone screen just to be like hey you know here, here's something simple now now that we're done with this here's here, here's the real problem kind of thing right um I, I don't think i expect anything more than this i mean you could make it more verbose and you can even make it a little bit messier but but at the end of the day it's going to be like 15 lines of code or 20 lines of code even if you're really um not verbose uh, as an interviewee again i would probably like this is too easy to be like on an interview maybe. So it, like I would not get my hopes up. I would just be like, okay, let's get this over with and then let's go to the real problem. Um, in comparative programming, this is probably a easy level problem that people uh, that like, even lead code would probably, um, like I, if I took longer than two minutes to solve this, I would be really disappointed in myself. Um, I don't, are there edge cases? I don't think there are actually even that many edge cases that you could do. I mean, the only one, the only one that maybe I was a little bit sloppy on, but that the answer uh, kind of, or the example already kind of took out, is that maybe I could shift the wrong way. And, and sometimes if, if the problem writer wants to be tricky, they might make it make the test cases in a way that, you know, you're not careful, you may get it wrong. But that's a little bit of a, like, you know, just testing reading uh, comprehension is not as interesting as testing algorithms and coding, but uh, but some, some problem setters will do that. Uh, but yeah, overall, a very simple problem, uh, and yeah, that's all I have, really. Uh, yeah, 
Uh, feel free to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know how you did, uh, what your comments on this part. Uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.